want to ask one of the fundamental issues that's on the table here, and that is the, the premise that's behind the President's uh, measure that we really need national gun control standards, because there are yeah. such great disparities mm -hmm. yeah. uh, among states. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and certainly, as I'm sure you're likely to, to argue, Gene, there are also different circumstances among states where it may make sense for one state to have stricter mm -hmm. uh, uh, controls than the other. Let me start with Benjamin Van Houten. Do we, how much of, uh, of gun legislation should be done at the national level and, and, and what is your assessment there? Well, we, we absolutely need national solutions, um, ultimately. You know, California has some of the strongest gun laws in the country, uh, and we are uh, bordered by uh, Nevada and Arizona, which have uh, some of the weakest. Uh, as a result, uh, we see a flow of crime guns into California mm -hmm. from neighboring states, and, and that's not an uncommon uh, occurrence around the country. Uh, crime guns, guns that are recovered in crimes in Illinois, many of them come from Indiana. Guns that are recovered in crimes in New York come from some of the southern states. They're documented patterns. Um, and it's no coincidence that the states that they come from, those crime guns, also have weaker laws. Uh, and uh, Mayors Against Illegal Guns has identified a number of key policy areas, in fact, where uh, those states that have those laws are sending fewer crime guns to uh, neighboring states. Uh, ultimately, we, we absolutely need national solutions. At, at the same time, a state like California can serve as a model for the nation. And, and by leading here, and, and, and I think Governor Cuomo has done a very commendable job in New York, you know, we can uh, both set the uh, national dialogue by adopting state measures and uh, uh, serve as guideposts for what needs to be uh, adopted there. You know, Nevada has not closed the private sale loophole. So if you go to a private seller in Nevada, you don't have to pass a background check. Arizona, the same thing. Th those are serious issues. The, the, the shooter involved in the 1993 mass shooting that, that led to the formation of our organization, he went to Nevada to get his guns. And, and it should be noted that the, uh, the closing that loophole, if you will, on private sales is part of the, the Obama plan. Gene Hoffman, um, what, is, what is your assessment on, on the, the, the wisdom of having national gun laws? Well, the issue here is, is that we probably do have a national gun law, and it's called the 14th Amendment. Um, and in fact, if we actually look at the history of the 14th Amendment, the whole point was to keep the southern states from killing returning freedmen who were coming home with their Union military firearms. Um, we always talk about this concept as being a conversation about redcoats, and it's not. The modern American gun right is the right for Martin Luther King to have armed bodyguards. Because the issue was, when we're talking about different states, Louisiana didn't necessarily like Dr. King and what he stood for, and he certainly didn't like SNCC and NAACP. I worry about a lot of the proposals we're talking about, because I can imagine how exactly the local sheriff and the local mayor in Bogalusa, Alabama, would have mishandled these to disarm the people who most needed firearms in 1963. Um, the reason we know the name Emmett Till and the reason we're aware of the Civil Rights Movement is because of a doctor named T.R.M. Howard who was known to be the local gun nut. And none of the KKK really wanted to take the chance that they would go in and invade his home when he sheltered Emmett Till's mom and brought the Chicago media down to Louisiana. Assemblywoman uh, Nancy Skinner, I, I see you want to weigh in. The, the proposals that President Obama have, has outlined, none would infringe on the right of a law-abiding citizen to own a gun and to have it in their home. So I've looked very closely at the entire list, and none would. It wouldn't restrict someone who didn't have, uh, wasn't already in the category of persons who are restricted from owning a gun, from owning the gun. And so the kinds of examples that you raised, the kind of proposals that are either in place in certain of our states or that, for example, New York passed or that we would like to pass in California would not infringe on that right. Um, I wanted to add in the, in the case of national laws, Benjamin already noted that we have difficulty being able to enforce our laws, or maybe it's not even enforced. The whole issue is that people can get around a state law or a city law if the state next door or the city next door, you can do that thing legally. So you can get around the fact that you're prohibited from buying the gun in California by buying it elsewhere, 
or if we have an assault weapons ban, which we do. If the nation doesn't, you can legally buy that assault weapon somewhere else. Or we can have a ban as we do now on the high capacity magazine clips, which are the, the ammunition uh, clips that allow you to shoot many, many bullets fast without reloading, but you can go next door and buy it. So without national law, we, our ability to protect ourselves and our communities is weakened.